Thank you for that um, kind introduction from my old friend. Um, and thanks for making it out of bed after the dinner last night. Um, and I write and I illustrate um, digital books, mostly for children. And I also make book apps for children. And I do research in this area. I also um, write and um, work on the concept development for adult games, so I do interactive narratives um, for adults. But today, what I'm really going to concentrate on is looking at storybook apps for children, because there's something quite interesting, I think, going on in this space at the moment. For the last two decades, there's been an explosion in the availability for technology for children. And there's also been an explosion in children's access to it. So as a result, in network societies, most children are high-level users of technology. And from a very young age, children have access to digital devices. And one statistic that's interesting for me in this area is the one that describes how children from the age of two and above are selecting their own apps. So they're making their own app choices and their own purchases. Now, this may not be surprising to some of you, but I think perhaps to some of you, if you think about it, like two is really quite young to be making your own purchases online. And this statistic is one that is rapidly increasing. So no longer are we marketing towards adults or towards teachers. We're really marketing directly towards children. And this is a new kind of arena because we need to make products that are attractive to children. Otherwise, they won't be downloaded and they won't be used. This really shifts the arena. The reason this has happened, there's a few different reasons, but the tablet's um, touch screen usability is really well matched with a ch child's motor skills, so they're able to use the technology well and purchase over this technology. And as a consequence of this, children are spending more time using apps and less time reading for pleasure. Children's printed picture books have been used as a cornerstone tool in child education. It helps in their social and in their literacy skills. Books have helped children explore and access imaginative thinking skills. And they've also supported children in simply being children. Storybooks also teach children vital communication skills, how to communicate using sentences that have beginnings and middles and ends. Therefore, it, it seems pertinent, given the uptake of app technology, that we look at how we can make digital books and book apps for children that help support their social and literacy skills. After all, we do want the next generation to be able to read. Yet we're only beginning to formulate understandings of how we can make stories for children in app form and how we can design book apps. There's a range of different book apps on the market. These are two wonderful examples, one by um, Sesame Workshop and the other by Moonbot Studios, both based in the States. Storybook apps, they're highly interactive and they're media rich. They're a fusion of digital graphics and animation, sound effects, music and text. I'll come back to both of these apps in just a moment. I just want to pause just to talk about some terminology because a lot of people use the term ebook when describing an app. But I just want to make clear that I really differentiate between these terms. Because people read ebooks whereas they use apps. Users are much more active with interactive technology. So the reader really becomes the user. And if you use the term ebook, you just have to be clear that most people think that you're talking about a digital replica of a printed book. So they think that you're talking about something that has virtual verso and recto pages, they're the two facing pages, and that they have a gutter down the middle, and that there are pages that are going to turn. 
Now, I designed this e-book using a traditional book structure because that's what the publisher wanted. But most of the features that are here are totally redundant in the digital realm. It's not necessary to have virtual pages. And so apps have moved into a different realm where they've taken away the redundant features of e-books. And it's interesting to note that um, studies reveal that children, they, they don't enjoy reading e-books. They really, um, it's, it's shown that apps are much more effective at grasping children's attention. So the consumer has spoken. They really want an app rather than an e-book. They want a more interactive experience and a more integrated um, use of the different media that's within it. It's um, also important to note that within these books, they're not games and they're not attempting to be games. It's not an exploratory 3D environment that you have a lot of different options within and mostly they're linear narratives. They're not branching narratives and there's a limited amount of choices. The reader is really, um, their attention is really directed towards continuing through a story. The book led him to an extraordinary building where many books apparently nested. So in this book app, the Fantastic Flying Books, you can use the touch screen to help the books go inside the library. But then really the expectation is that the user goes to the next scene within the story. It's not an, an environment to be explored. What is interesting to note here, that alongside the digitization of literature has been this acceptance that we consume digital technology in solitude. And this is kind of really interesting for me because we've sort of just accepted this and we're all going along with this. The days passed, so did the months, and then years. So what's happening here is a recorded audio narrator is reading the story aloud to a child in lieu of an adult reading together with them. So the child is expected that they're going to be consuming this content in solitude. And what this does is suggest to us that perhaps adding interactive, interactive computing to children's lives at such young ages could lead to significant shifts in children's interactions with the world around them. And of course there are positive and negative effects to children accessing computing. It depends on the um, type of content that's being consumed and the way it's being consumed. So for example, on the positive side of things, apps provide a lot of options, or they can provide a lot of options for the user. And there's some really positive effects associated with this. For example, if you can turn off the audio in an app, some children within specific learning spectrums find this really useful because the audio can be quite distracting with them being able to concentrate and focus on the story and where the story is progressing. It's hard for them to make sense of it with the audio there. Having the options is great because some kids find the audio really evocative and it helps, them, helps it further explain the story. So people are different, so the options can be great and really supportive. On the negative side of things, children show that in, in, within studies that when they're reading an app beside an adult, they find that the adult gets in the way. So often what the adult does is, is try and kind of um, help with the interactivity or share the functionality with the child and the child's sort of finding this is really disturbing their experience of the app. 
It appears that designers have not created a role for the adult within shared reading of young children's literature. Once upon a time, an adult would read a storybook with a child and they would sit side by side and discuss the content and this really value adds, not just for the child but for the adult. It really provides a strong sense of social bonding and it helps both the adult and child understand more about the societies in which we live in. And this, this is why it really matters. This is why it matters that adults have been designed out of it because shared reading has become a vital activity within the development, specifically for children, of their social and literacy skills. Some children's storybooks, they have functions where you can um, mute the audio narration. And so this, to some degree, allows the adult to read the book together <laughs> with the child. The problem is this is not a function that's widely used because children have shown that they, they don't like adults interfering. It's not, it's not an experience that's been shown as positive. So we have to find other ways of designing the adult back into these kind of apps if we want to supply children with these kinds of um, increased social and literacy opportunities. Do you know that you are very strong? Yeah. So this is the Sesame Studios app the monster at the end of this book. And it's a really great example of what can be called a digital tutor. So some designers have created this kind of digital tutor um, in order to replicate the role that adults played with reading together with children. And in this case, the um, Sesame Studios have done it really subtly and incredibly well, creating a character that not only helps you navigate through the app and use all of the um, functionality within it, but they're also the protagonist. They're the main character in the story. You're on their side. And they've got lots of flaws, so they're very likeable. And in this example here, um, the character's not even visible. They're just, it's just pointing towards the text. So really what it's trying to do is direct the child's attention to the text. And they've highlighted the text in um, sync with the audio narration. And this further helps um, young pre-literate and semi-literate ch children to draw a connection between <coughs> spoken word and written word. It helps them learn literacy skills. But the interesting, the interesting thing is here um, is that not all books are designed with this level of subtlety, with this level of a virtual adult built into it. And regardless of these types of attempts to build a virtual adult into storybooks, it's, the studies still show that the best results are when people sit side by side and read together. There's, um, a, there's a point where the character actually underlines the words as he's speaking them out loud. So this is really another way of replicating how adults read together. The days children. passed, so did the months, and then years. This is more the norm of what you see. This has become the standard where the narrator reads the written text that's there and the written text is static, it's not animated. So this is mostly what you see. You don't see the subtlety um, that the Sesame Studios has built into their app. So with this in mind, I designed a, a storybook app for children aged three to five. And one of my main goals in making this was to make an app that children would enjoy reading whilst they're alone and one that they'd enjoy reading together with an adult. So I was trying to replicate um, the experience that they may have with a printed picture book. Just knowing the statistics that kids are moving more towards apps and away from picture books, just really looking at what 
things we could carry along with us rather than just leave everything behind. What, what have we learnt from picture books? What can we carry along and build them into apps? This is what I was kind of curious about. I, I didn't initially set out to make something where um, I was building an adult into the app. Initially, it just seemed to me that having a narrator that directly read the text, like doubling this level of content, just seemed to be a wasted opportunity. There seemed to be much more of an opportunity to make sort of a triad, sort of a pyramid effect between the text and the visuals and the audio. So you can tell a richer story and that you can give the user a richer experience of what it is that you're communicating. So in doing this, I created a design that um, drew on a lot of different elements from picture books. I used a lot of hand-made hand features within it. So I built three-dimensional sets and photographed them. And there's hand illustration, all the typography was handmade, and, um, and there's also mixed together with photographs. So there's a collage going on. And there's also, I used imagery courtesy of NASA. The story's about um, distance and space, and it's a mixture between fact and fiction. I'm not really going to analyse the app, because there's not the time or space here to do that, but I'm just going to pull out some of the features and look at the relationship really between the text, the visuals and the audio, just so we can understand some alternative ways in which we can design these items. Um, I wrote the story and did the illustrations. Um, I recorded and performed the music. I did the audio narration um, and the um, interaction design. I worked in the software suite Demibooks Composer Pro when making this. And I was really looking at delving into each of the elements of designing this app, aside from the coding, um, so I could understand the storytelling opportunities in this, because really fundamentally that's my job. I come up with stories for people and I write them and I draw them. So I was interested in what the opportunities that apps were providing for this. Past outer galaxies. storybook apps, the animation is much more minimal and the interactivity is as well than what you might see in a game or another type of interactive environment because the aim is to propel the user through the story. We actually want them to finish something rather than just dip in and dip out which is much more the experience that you have with a game. And so there's a, there's a whole lot of different um, sets of techniques, I suppose, storytelling techniques going on when designing this type of work. In making it, I really made a conscious decision for the imagery and the text and the audio to each tell different parts of the story. So here, the text is really an observation of what the galaxies might be doing. It's an imaginative observation. The audio narration operates in this work as sort of um, a documentary style account of the characters as they progress through space, because these characters take a journey through outer space. So the audio narration says, up past outer galaxies. The narration occurs at a different time than the text is appearing on the screen. So it's quite obvious to the kid that, um, that they're not the same content. That becomes really clear to them pretty quickly. And the um, other part of the visuals is really looking at the character's response. So how do they feel about the situation that they're in? And this operates as a bridge potentially between the content and the child's emotions 
at the time who's reading it. So does this app work? Do the kids understand the story? Do they enjoy engaging with adults? Well, we tested this app and so I'm going to share with you some, some initial findings from this. The whole study is being published early next year, so if you're interested in the nitty gritties about this type of thing, then watch this space for all of the details. But I'll, I'll just give you an indication of what it is that we found. So we tested a group of three to five year old children, um, asking them to read the app whilst they're alone and then asking them to read it together with an adult. And we tested them before, during and after with interviews and observation after they did each of these activities. We wanted to know what they thought of the app, what they thought the story was about, and we particularly wanted to compare what they said and did when they read the app alone and what they said and did before, during and after reading the app together with an adult so we could compare how we could build adults back into these kinds of technology. So the huge majority of the participants had um, used an iPad before. Um, there's a couple that had never touched a touch screen. So we, we didn't um, really filter for any sample, particular sample. It was a fairly randomised sample of children. I found it quite interesting that we managed to get a four-year-old child, four, one was three, one was four, who'd never touched a touch screen before. Um, just interestingly enough, they showed no different levels of being able to interact or not, or understand or not, the, um, the technology. So that was interesting, that little bit of an aside. On average, these, or I should say, the huge majority, 97% of the children, used, the, uses an, used an iPad every day. And most of them, huge majority of them, used them whilst they were alone. A couple of them used them with siblings, and very, very few, I think there was only one that had used it, that used it with their parents. So really, this idea of solitude between um, human and technology was, was reinforced. On average, they showed an increase in positive feeling after they read the app with an adult. So this, this was interesting. The, chil the children um, felt uh, good after they read the app alone, but they felt really good after, um, and this, this kind of terminology, if you know anything about testing with children, is um, standard terminology that you use. So um, it's on a smileometer, if you know that, the old smileometers. Um, so th this was an interesting finding for us because previously, in you know, the, the big studies that we'd read and the studies that we'd done, children hadn't enjoyed sharing apps with adults. And this showed us that it's not that they felt rubbish reading it by themselves. They actually, they actually felt good. But they had an improvement in feeling reading with an adult. But there's a few other things that we can understand more deeply from this study. The children displayed a finer ability to articulate the story after they'd read together with an adult. So they could tell us more about the story. So two thirds of the children could tell us what they thought the story was about after they'd read the app alone. And in each of these instances, this included information about the story, the characters, or the setting. So it wasn't just you know, information about their camping trip last week. Um, but after they'd read the storybook together with an adult, 100% of the participants could provide us with a verbal recount of the story. And this included information about the story, the characters, and the setting. And we compared their responses to when they read it alone, to when they read it with an adult, and it was a much deeper and more detailed understanding of the story that they were able to describe. Not to say that they didn't have it in their head before, but they weren't able to articulate it. So reading together with an adult appears to improve um, children's understanding of a narrative. And there may not be any surprises here, but it's really important for us to remember that children mostly aren't reading apps with adults. So whilst we might know, sure, that makes sense, of course they're going to understand more with an adult, that's not what we're designing. 
So it kind of feels really important for us as developers and designers to keep that in mind, that they actually can have a better experience of it and more um, you can add to their developmental skills if you design adults into apps. Now, keeping in mind that one of the focuses of this was to make an app that supported children's literacy skills um, and that these are pre- and semi-literate children. Um, we were interested in their relationship to the written text. And they couldn't, um, most of the children couldn't read the written text, a couple could make out a couple, um, individual words. Um, but 50% of the five-year-old children asked us about the written text. Mostly they all said the same line, what does that say? And we told them all exactly the same sentence when they were reading it alone. Uh, we said to them, we can't read the app with you now, but you will read it together with an adult later. Now what we were trying to do here is kind of replicate a school situation or a domestic situation where the parents may be doing the dishes and the kids saying, what does this say? And you just say, look, I can't do it now, what about we read it at bedtime? And we wanted to test how this made the child feel because we knew that they were used to being able to have that information instantaneously, previously through having an audio narrator. What was the most interesting part of the study for me, or one of the most interesting, is that there was no change, recorded change in their behaviour at all. Absolutely nothing. They just went straight back to the same activity that they were doing 100% of the time. None of them. None of them went, oh, it's your move, oh, oh, nothing. There was enough for them to do within the app, and they could just go, they just went, oh, 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 oh. actually, no, they didn't. Most of them didn't even respond. They just went, oh, straight back into it. And so it, it does show that you can create the one work that serves these two purposes, where the child can enjoy having an experience whilst they're alone and enjoy having a shared story experience with an adult. And really, this is a, um, a similar thing to what children have done for hundreds of years with picture books. So perhaps this design approach does represent one way in which we can supply this kind of content for children in a successful way. The results of this study suggest that if an adult engages with a child in shared reading of apps, the child reports better understandings of the narrative than if they read the app alone. Perhaps this finding may encourage developers to create more content that's designed to be consumed by a child and by a combination of child and adult readers together. Now, when I say the term reader, I, I really should qualify that and saying within the context of looking at, at um, picture books and the way that um, pre- and semi-literate children read, they learn to read both text and images. So when I say that the child just went back to reading the app, what they're doing is learning how to read images. And this is one of the really important parts of teaching children literacy skills. So they can read signs and symbols and all of the uh, visual communications that they come across within their life. This is a, a really simple design proposal in which the recorded narrator does not read the written text aloud. Yet this design may lead to positive social and educational outcomes. In order for children to understand the written text, an adult needs to read it to them. As education institutions shift more towards delivering via digital and online platforms, it seems important for developers to remember to maintain the role for adults or for teachers to play within the design. Don't design adults out or we may be dumbing down our kids. I love technology and I love fresh tech ideas. It's my absolute lifeblood. But amongst this maelstrom of progress, that we're currently within, let's not forget how much can be achieved when humans simply just sit side by side. Thank you.